Oh, hello, friends. How's it going? Hey, Toria, glad to see you in the chat. I know it's late for you, so totally understand if you get sleepy. <laughs> Can everybody hear me all right? Let me know if that is not the case. Uh, but welcome back to Attack the Pantry. I am Jen De La Vega. This stream is a deep dive into ingredients, cooking techniques, and recipes to help you cook for yourself during the ongoing panini and miserable times of our lives. And, you know, the rest of your life. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of news happening lately. Um, last time on the show, I celebrated a season two launch of Culinary Word of the Day, which is my tiny, tiny podcast that I make with my friend Alicia. Um, and so that is out now on all the podcast platforms. We have a new episode uh, out every Wednesday. So you can expect that. Ooh, no, I dropped my gloves. I had some gloves that I was going to work with later, but now I'm tangled. Oh, things are happening. Things are happening. Did you know, my friends, that it is September? It is Twitch's... Uh, uh, I think campaign to get people to subscribe to all the channels. So there's like, I think a 30% discount if you subscribe for a couple months at a time. Uh, but you can check it out. Uh, hit that button that says uh, gift a sub and you'll see the breakdown of all the things. But subscriptions in general help fund this whole operation. It is not free. <laughs> I use fancy streaming software and all that, but uh, every little bit helps. Anyway, there are tons of great links below the video. If you want to click around and meet me on the internet, there's Patreon, there's Etsy, there's all sorts of stuff. But uh, I did not have time to gather folks' uh, cooking photos this week. So if you have cooking photos, please make sure you're tagging me on Instagram at Red, which is, or on Twitter, so that I can do a little show and tell. Here's my Instagram, Red, which is. Mm. Great. What else is happening? Um, yeah. That's all really I wanted to say. But, uh, how is everyone? How are you? Let me know how you're doing. And, and, tell me what you are eating for dinner, or if you've already eaten dinner, tell me what it, it was. I love to hear about your dinner. I'm gonna briefly check on the sound, because I didn't do that yet. So hold on one moment. Okay, we're good. We're good. We love to hear about your cooking adventures, if you have any cooking adventures. Um, so I was just in LA and I'm gonna be lazy about showing you. Usually I make a slideshow, <laughs> but now I'm just gonna share a tab on my screen so that you can see. I'll talk you through all the things that I had this week in LA or last week in LA. Let me just find the post. Here we go. Hey, Bearclaw, oh my god, Maihan, what's up? Good to see y'all. Whoa, thawing some chicken thighs at the moment for butter chicken. Hell yeah. That's quite an endeavor for this, e uh, this evening. Love that. Love butter chicken. Um, Bearclaw. Fine and too full for my shredded chuck burrito. That is fantastic. That sounds incredible. So good. We love to hear it. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen so you can see what I did in LA this week. I'm from LA, but like, I've always, you know, I've always been with my parents, so I've never really explored it on my own so i kind of reveled in being a tourist in the place that i'm from isn't that is that weird is that weird i don't know Ooh, toria things are good glad the weather is cooling me too i'm so glad it's fall weather finally in new york i had spicy bulldog some young noodles chicken and veg cheese and egg i actually can't handle that brand that brand of instant noodle uh i think it's a little too much for me to enjoy it but it sounds like you're adding a lot of really great stuff to like, you know, cushion the blow of the spiciness. Which which color of bulldog are you talking about? Which color package? 
because I had the black one and I was like, this was a mistake. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see how I can do this. We're going to share a tab so you can see. There we go. Here's my Twitter thread. Being a tourist in the state where I was born. This is my friend Yara, who is visiting at the same time as me. We were walking around Los Feliz in Silver Lake with our host, Sara. Sara and Yara, kind of amazing. Uh, Yara actually just won a James Beard Award in journalism. Uh, if you follow him on Twitter, he's amazing. And we had lunch. Uh, and then we discovered this kind of really fancy market called Erewhon. Uh, I don't actually know the lore of Erewhon, the shop, but apparently it's supposed to be nowhere spelled backwards, but it's spelled incorrectly? It's E-R-E-W-O-N, but there should be an H in there somewhere. <laughs> anyway, we bought this natural wine to enjoy later. Um... Let's see, what else? We had a fun time looking around the fancy store. I mean, I was just pointing at all the cheese. I was trying, you know, I was Little Mermaid. Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? And we were marveling at the juices. We were all joking that we should, um, you know, we should each get a juice like of different colors and then hang out and eavesdrop in Los Angeles. I could not bring myself to buy a full bottle of this juice. You wanna know why? Because the juice was $25. <laughs> that is a lot of money. Ooh, David's here in the chat. Long time. How you doing? Oh, cool. Okay, wait. We're going back, rewinding about the bulldog conversation. Toria uses about two-thirds of the pack of noodles. Add lots of vegetables so the sauce spreads out. This is a great idea. And usually you have the black pack, but today it's pink carbonara. Okay, this is good advice for handling the Bulldog uh, brand spice. It's an incredible. Incredible. Ooh, Summer Deadline Madness. I totally know what you're talking about. I am on a book, a book deadline at the end of this month, and then I actually am supposed to start another one this week. So, woo, <laughs> busy season, everybody, busy season. But anyway, uh, yeah, we were marveling at the juice and how expensive it was. Look, at there's like a purple one. I don't know if you can see that. There's like blue ones, there were green ones. I was reading the ingredients and I was taken aback that they were, I mean, the reason why they were expensive is not only were they juicing everything on the premises, they were also adding really expensive ingredients like um, spirulina. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the blue uh, butterfly tea. I forget what it's called. It's like a blue pea, like a blue butterfly tea. It's like expensive. Um, they were using dandelion greens. And one of the green drinks had like broccoli in it. And I was like, nah, <laughs> I can't. As much as I advocate for vegetables and stuff, I was just like, nah, <laughs> not broccoli in my drink, please. Please no. Anyway, um, I got to meet one of the new authors that I'm working with, and we went to dinner at a place called Bavo, and it's a Middle Eastern uh, restaurant, and we ordered things that A, she recommended, and B, had never had before, and so she never ordered the chicken liver pate. Uh, yeah, this is chicken liver pate. It is. It was incredible. Like, really, really cool plating, I thought. It was super smooth. And on top, those are pickled blueberries and little fronds of tarragon. So fancy. And then the other side is Urfa pepper honey. So if you've heard of Aleppo pepper, there is also a regional variety called Urfa pepper from the same region. Um, and so you're supposed to take the sourdough bread and sort of drag it through to both sides. So you get a little bit of the liver and then some of the honey. And it was kind of like a really like a meaty peanut butter and jelly, if that sounds right. I don't know. It was delicious. I really liked it. Oh yeah, butterfly pea flowers. Thank you, my hun. That was, I knew I was along the lines of that. Thank you. Fact checker, my fact checker is here. 
Uh, what else? Uh, these are prawns. It's a little blurry, but prawns with tzatziki. And I don't really like shrimp at all. But, you know, I was willing to give it a chance. And these were incredible. Like, I don't like, I don't like shrimp. I feel like they're the bugs of the sea. They are the trash compactors of the ocean floor. They eat everything and they're gross. But these were delicious. They were very juicy. They were spicy. And then there was a side of a spiralized uh, tzatziki on the side. It was really cool. Ooh, yeah. Butterfly pea flowers make for a gorgeous looking mead. For sure. I mean, I believe it. But, you know, putting it in the naturally squeezed juice to up the price, not very nice. Uh, what else did I eat? Ooh, this is like the lamb neck. This is like a whole lamb neck that's been cooking for like 16 hours. And then they had a homemade luffa bread underneath and some cilantro and garlic oil. Goodness me, it was very good. And then these were um, oyster mushrooms and I think an avocado vinaigrette underneath but it was served to us on a giant metal skewer. Like it was cooked like it was meat. It was delicious. It's really good. Yeah. So that was Bavel, B-A-V-E-L, and it's in the arts district of LA. If you ever need like a fancy family dinner or something like that, it was pretty pricey. So I warn you, <laughs> I had to drink a lamb fat washed bourbon cocktail that was great. I only had one drink, but it was perfect with all the stuff that we had. Yeah, it was like a mushroom kebab, for sure. Yeah, delicious. And then we also had like sides of freshly made uh, fire grilled bread. Um, we had a fried pita that was like, that puffed up and we had to like deflate it. <laughs> Super fun. Uh, what else happened on my trip? Oh, uh, I met up with my friend Sam who just moved to LA and we were in the North Hollywood area, which is maybe 20, 30 minutes away from uh, Los Angeles proper. But we went to a tiki bar called, I believe it was Tonga Hut. I might have to double check that. My brother is the one that drove us there. Let me see. I think it was called Tonga Hut. Yeah, Tonga Hut. And I got an orb. I got like an almond almond-based creamy uh, rum drink, and I, I was pondering my orb. <laughs> really fun. Uh, super delicious and very, very, um, what's the word? Uh, drinks that kind of sneak up on you, you know? Deceptively alcoholic drinks, but don't taste like alcohol. Highly recommended if you have a car in the LA area. Um, Cause right next door, oops. Because right next door, or in the next uh, street over, uh, Sam introduced us to this bakery called Papillon. Uh, so freshly fried ponchik, parashki, and uh, lots of really cool drinks. Like, so I had a ponchik, which is sort of like a donut. You can see here that it's deep fried. They were all freshly fried. So it's like a donut, but it has kind of a harder um, corn dog like shell. And then they put, uh, you know, uh, powdered sugar on top. So it's not airy, but it was, I don't know, it was like a little more protective shell situation. So I had a Ferrero Rocher, like hazelnut candy inside of mine. It was great. Super hot, but really great. Um, and then here's some selection of drinks that I saw in the, in the fridge. I don't know if anyone's ever had this stuff, uh, like Hawthorne. Hawthorne compote. I think it's like a simple syrup. Hawthorne simple syrup and mint simple syrup. And then they have rose hip juice. Pretty cool. And then they had a selection of like yogurt sodas and yogurt drinks. Look at all that. I should just buy a case of that stuff. Looks so good for you. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What else? Um, for dinner that night, I took my family to, let's see if I can, uh, you can see, I'm going to turn the sound off so you, you can hear, you can, you can't hear the sound. I can hear the sound. But, uh, this place was called Fei Fe Gong. 
Yeah, F E I space X I A N G space Gong G O N G, and you know how like at Korean barbecue you cook yourself on on a you cook all the food yourself on a stove with like a vent above you. Well, similar situation, but this thing had a auto turning skewer, so they would give us all the skewers and we'd have to put them on different sides of the fire. So the middle of the fire was, you know, if you wanted something to cook qu quicker or if you wanted something to cook slower, we put them on the edges. And then they have this rack above that you could put the skewers on top to rest, you know, uh, so that people could just grab it and eat what they wanted. My parents were a little impatient with the method because we had to, you know, wait for these to, to turn. <laughs> but I thought it was really fun. Um, if you ever go, my my biggest recommendation is the spicy lamb skewers, as well as the pork belly, like pork skin skewers. They give you all this free banchan. So it's a Chinese place in Koreatown in LA. So they still have like, free kimchi, uh, pickled onion, a bunch of dipping sauces, um, and then like a cabbage salad with like a peanut garlic sauce. It was so good. It was like so, so good. Highly recommend. Let me see if I can get the website for you so you can check it out. Fei Zhang Gong. Fei Zhang Gong. They have a Yelp page. Send that to you. Check it out. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, yeah, there's my brother and his partner Richard. It's like, that's a better look at the setup. You know, you see that tiny rack on top of the skewers. But my brother and I are really serious about it. And I am I look like I'm about to order more. Because I think we're pulling off all the chicken. And I think we wanted beef next. I don't know if you can see it toward the bottom and on the right. There is... Uh, enoki mushrooms wrapped in brisket. <laughs> Those are intense, but really good. But we had a great time. Delicious. Afterward, we had dessert at Somi Somi, which is a soft serve and taiyaki shop. So taiyaki is like the, the fish-shaped waffle cone. They make them all fresh, so it was like crisp and hot when they put it on top of my ice cream. I got ube and milk swirl with some Biscoff cookie crumble and a strawberry. Uh, they have other flavors like matcha and cookie cream. And you could get like Oreo or a chocolate macaron on top. Um, I just thought it was so much ice cream that I couldn't just eat it like a normal cone because you can. And I just, I was like, I need a cup. <laughs> I'm so sorry. There's a lot of ice cream. It was good though. Super cute. What else? Uh, okay, so I had like leftovers for breakfast once, one morning. So I showed you the, um, but I forgot what it was already. I forgot what it was called. It was called Ponchik. So Ponchik is the donut-like one from the bakery, but this is Perashki, which is kind of like a corn dog. So I got it from Papillon Bakery in North Hollywood. And I was just having some leftovers, so like pickle veg and some Marcona almonds. But it was basically a corn dog without the stick. It was great. I loved it. Definitely need to dip stuff, but real good. Uh, I finally, finally went to Wanderlust Ice Cream. Uh, Wanderlust uh, has several locations in Los Angeles and they have some really cool flavors. So on the left is nopal, so like cactus with like grape. And then on the right is the ube malted crunch, which is the, the, the purple, purple yam. And it was delicious. Both of them taste great together. So much fun. Uh, I went to a bar called The Black Cat in Los Feliz, and I learned, today I learned, that an Oliver Twist Martini is an olive wrapped in lemon zest. So you can have, a, you know, you can in a martini, you can have it dirty, which is olive juice. Um, you can have a twist, which is just the lemon. But you can also have a Gibson, which is a pickled onion. But if you say Oliver Twist, it is olive and the, the zest skewered together on the thing, which is now I think my preference. 
I think that's like how I like a martini now. Oh my gosh, Mayan. There's a spotlight here in Seattle called Matcha Man. Hell yeah. Yeah. And Toria agrees. I've taken to doing that lately, sticking ice cream cone on top and cracking off Fifth Susan's scoop. Yeah, it's like ice cream nacho. I like that. <laughs> I like that so much. Um, for dinner on my last night, we went to Casita del Campo, and I highly, highly, highly recommend sitting outside because they have tables like this. I tweeted this and I was like, get in, loser, we're getting guac. <laughs> Incredible. It's a great um, Mexican place uh, with margaritas and outdoor seating and lovely atmosphere. I had a great time. Um, we saw this fountain on our way out. Like, I couldn't believe that we missed it on our way in. But, you know, it's kind of this sort of uh, religious tropicalia vibe. And last but not least, uh, they have an incredible old school sign. Like, I just love the typefaces in Los Angeles and like the custom signage. It's so cool. Anyway, that's the span of my LA trip. Uh, it <laughs> was over the course of three days. Can you believe I've like squeezed all that into three days? But I'm building a list of things to eat there. So I'm going to be back there in December uh, to do a wedding and see my family. So would lovely, happily take suggestions if you have any, or I'll give you suggestions if you think you're going to go sometime. Anyway, that was my like modern day slideshow. Like here's all my pictures from vacation. <laughs> all right, today, moving on from that, today I'm just going to do some prep for this cookbook that I'm working on. And it's a restaurant cookbook. So there's a lot of um, interplay of the condiments and fun stuff. So tonight I'm going to make a few things. I'm going to make stracciatella. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. That's the inside of buffalo, not buffalo, of burrata. So burrata is a mozzarella cheese that has this like really soft filling uh, called stracciatella. And it's basically the leftover mozzarella that's been soaking in heavy cream and butter. So I will be making that on my own because I don't need to buy burrata to make the filling. So I'm just going to make the filling. Uh, I have some pickles I need, no, some peppers I need to pickle. Boy, that was a hard sentence. Uh, and then I'm gonna make a sesame vinaigrette. So we're just gonna chill and hang until it's dinner time because I gotta, gotta cook later, later. But I'm glad to hang and prep with y'all. I'm gonna take my headphones off because now I know the audio works. Let me just turn up my, uh, brightness. Oh, that's too bright, I think. I know, I also could never resist a burrata. I think we'll, ch we'll also change uh, some music so we can, uh, here we go, lo-fi beats. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Also, did you know that I'm 10 people away, 10 followers away from 500 here on Twitch? It feels like I've been grinding on this for so long. <laughs> it's like on my third year of it. <laughs> third year of Twitch. Okay. So let's walk through stracciatella, which is really easy. I, it's like a two ingredient or optional three or four ingredient recipe. So I already had some going because I, uh, yeah, I already had some going, but uh, you could just take a cup of heavy cream, put it in a container. And then what you do is you rip up pieces of mozzarella, small like, so you can pinch it and you can see where all the like stringy parts are. And then you can just pull it apart like that and then put it in the heavy cream. And then it will gel together because there is fat globules in the heavy cream that the cheese likes to, to bond to. And so it becomes this really saucy, lovely situation. I'm gonna probably have to go get more heavy cream to top this off. But basically this sits for two days. Um, a really fun, like, you know, home science experiment is to um, shred the mozzarella with your hands like this and then put it in the heavy cream and then check it uh, in, 
in the evening before you go to bed and be like, oh, that's a cool texture. And then try it again in the morning and then try it again after day two. And about by day two and a half, three days, um, it has this lovely, lovely um, saucy texture, just like in the middle of a burrata. But this is how you make stracciatella from scratch. Um, the reason why burrata is stuffed with, with leftovers is because it seriously was leftovers. So when you make a lot of mozzarella, uh, what happens is the curds are, you know, cut into squares. I don't know if you've ever seen cheese curds. They're, they're usually in like squares or big chunks. But how, the way you make mozzarella is heating it to a uh, higher temperature so that it can um, sort of rejoin with itself. Um, and then once it, it's, it's uh, you know, you melt all the curds together delicately, you can stretch it and then tie it up into the knots that we know as mozzarella. So mozzarella is a smooth ball, but it's actually like, it's called pasta filata. It's like stretched and then like tied together in a knot. And then the knot is actually cut off. And that's how you get the smooth, the smooth uh, mozzarella ball. But what do they do with all those knots? They put it in stracciatella, which is amazing. Ooh, okay. So this is also a different definition of Stracciatella. So Maihan is describing the flavor Stracciatella. So it's a favorite flavor of gelato. Yes, exactly. They are they're like same same but different in the fact in the um, the fact that it deals with both dairy. So Stracciatella, uh, the gelato flavor, is more of like vanilla creamy with like um, big chunks of chocolate shards in it. So it's kind of like your your uh, vanilla chip <laughs> vanilla chip flavor yeah but stracciatella in cheese is the filling of burrata crazy right we love that yeah the cheese curds either end up directly in your mouth or put on fries with gravy ah so there are a lot of really great tutorials about this online but you can make mozzarella at home it is though a high temperature situation. So you'd have to be able to withstand hot water. <laughs> so like you put all the curds at the bottom of a bowl, you pour like a certain, I forget what the range of temperatures is. You might have to look it up, but um, it's a pretty hot, hot temperature. And you uh, kind of, uh, you know, stretch the curds together until it's like uniform. And then you make the, the ball and then tie off the knot. And then the knot is what you put in the heavy cream if you were making tons and tons of mozzarella. Anyway, this is my shortcut. I don't want to have to buy a burrata. <laughs> and I already had heavy cream on hand, so. So this is going to have to sit for about two days, and then I will have stracciatella to use for work, which is great. And a lot of delicate cheeses like stracciatella and burrata are used at the last minute, a la minute. Because it's not a cheese that you, it's so delicate, you lose a lot of the flavor when you heat them too much. So it's a lot of fresh preparation. So um, this tracciatella is probably going with some yellow wax beans and asparagus, I think. But I don't exactly remember the recipe. Um, I'm going to go grab the heavy cream. Throw this away. Let's grab the heavy cream and top it off. Ew, where did I put the heavy cream? <laughs> oh no. Did I use it up? I don't think I did. Well, we're just gonna have to stir it if I used it up. That's okay. Anyway, just use a spoon just so that it touches some of the cream in there already. I just didn't need much more. Well, see if I press it down, it's all covered. So that's great. Could use like another tablespoon, but it'll be fine. So decadent, so nice. Ooh. Oh no, I have to eat this one. <laughs> Give it a new lid. And from here, if you're gonna serve this, you can also use melted butter to flavor it. You could add salt, you can do pepper. Um, you could do a little bit of sugar and honey. 
You could even just serve this in a bowl with some olive oil, salt, and pepper, and then just have some really nice toast or crostini. Great. I'll take my gloves off for a second. Yeah. Oh, it's so easy. It's so, so, so easy. And a little bit more cost effective than buying burrata straight out. And then what's even more fun, if you want to try to make your own burrata, I mean, it's next, you know, it's a graduate level cheese making, but um, you could totally do it at home if you want. I don't think y'all have seen me like label my stuff, but um, I have my own brand of tape, or at least I use this color for everything. And then we do, you know, Stracciatella. And our date, today's date is the 14th. Great. Boop, one thing prepped. Wonderful. Okay, let's move on to a dressing. Let's see, what is the next dressing? Um, we are going to fudge something. Do I wanna do that one right now? No, okay, wait, we're going to, we're gonna do the sesame one first. Oops. Oh, there's somebody. Sorry. <laughs> there was somebody here. Ooh. Yeah, so mozzarella ripped up and mixed in cream is the filling of burrata. So you're not paying, for, I mean, what you're paying for is the skill of enveloping all that stracciatella inside of a mozzarella, which is pretty hard. But yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's kind of backwards, right? Burrata became more famous than the actual mozzarella that was the main product. Like a lot of things happen like that. Like people really love the runoff of something. Like Velveeta became really popular uh, when it launched uh, because it was made from whey and it uh, melted really easily. So it is sort of a funny commercial capitalist thing that the byproduct is now worth more than the original product that it came from. <laughs> yeah, really weird. Um, okay. Let's do the sesame dressing first. So I have a bowl. We have a bowl. I'm gonna put my ingredients in here. Okay. I'm missing a few ingredients, but I have notes to myself to uh, remedy that another time. Okay, so we're gonna have, we're starting with some aioli. The recipe actually calls for uh, mayo, but this is the, I have so much of this aioli. I was like, well, it's mayo with one clove of garlic. So it's actually the same thing. Uh, the, the recipe does not, uh, is not hurt by the addition of garlic. So I don't, I kind of don't mind making the substitution. Okay. So I've got some mayo in the bowl here. We're going to do a half recipe. So it's two teaspoons. Oh, I'm so dumb. I did not bring my measuring cups over here. Let's go get it. Where is my measuring cup? Measuring cups, plural. Okay. I'm going for two teaspoons of sugar. Ooh, there's a fuzz on my spatula. All right. And, uh, when you measure stuff, you level it off. One and uh, two. And then we're gonna go, oops, I don't have enough sesame seeds, so that's not all going to go in. I'll add more sesame seeds another time. But two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar. We got that here. Beep, 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 beep. Pew. Beep, 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 beep. Pew. Some tamari. In this case, I'm using some soy sauce. I know uh, this is so annoying. It says half a tablespoon, but people don't actually measure that way. I know where it is on my spoon, but uh, for those of you at home who don't have a half tablespoon spoon, that is one and a half teaspoons. Okay. What else we're missing? 
a tablespoon of water. Okay. Whoop. Ooh. Okay. We're just gonna mix. Go down here a little bit more. Mix. And I'm gonna put it back in the container that I was working with. Actually, you know what'll be better? The spatula is good for transferring things from container to container, but it's not good for mixing. Oops, things are just all over the place here. We're gonna get the tiny whisk. Now this is a sesame dressing that's going on some salmon that I'm cooking tomorrow. So it's good to get ahead, get ahead of work. Do all the little menial stuff tonight. And get going tomorrow. Look at that. That is some dressing. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get some of that. Get some of this off. Well, so well, we'll, we'll, I won't transfer it just yet because I have some sesame seeds, and we might need to torch them a little bit. I ran out of uh, butane, so we're going to use the propane torch for this. So I've got uh, maybe a teaspoon of sesame seeds in the container here. We're going to put it in a heat safe situation. I need to buy more sesame seeds. Look at me. I'm gonna turn on my searzel. Which way is it? Okay. I'm just gonna toast. Oh, I see some of them popping out. I don't know if you can hear them crackling, but that would be awesome. <laughs> They went from white to toasty, toasty. Oh, speaking of toasty, I freaking played Mortal Kombat 11 the other day and it was so bloody. It was so scary. I was like, oh my God. First of all, you know, Mortal Kombat itself was already pretty gross, but in this one, they, uh, you know, it's pretty gross, but then they go even a step further. Like, somebody's eyeball was, like, flying out. I was like, no! Uh, it's like, every time uh, a battle ended, I would just be like, oh, man! <laughs> That's so gory! But it was really cool to revisit um, Katana and Melina, who were my favorites when I played um, Mortal Kombat way back. So, good to see that. So now we have some toasted sesame in the dressing. Make sure that it's incorporated. Gonna add more of that tomorrow. And then we're gonna put it back in my container. Okay. Now we, we bring back the uh, spatula. Because the whisk does not, you know, accomplish the job of getting every, uh, Every little nook and cranny. Right. Let's get that in there. Oh, Bear Claw, you really like Mortal Kombat 11? That was my first time seeing it. I mean, I watched the trailers, but like playing it, uh, I was really shocked that I still was pretty natural for Melina. Because a lot of the moves are the same, which was refreshing. I was like, oh, wow, I just never forgot. It was in my long-term memory, I guess. <laughs> okay, get all that dressing in there. So it's going to be for salmon tomorrow. Very exciting. Oh, I wrote aioli on this lid, so I'm going to write now use the tape to cover it up. This is why kitchen tape is so good. Oh, <laughs> hi 5000. Yes, you are so right that the gore is the garnish on top of your winning match. Very on on brand here with Attack the Pantry. 
Thank you for that. Hello and welcome also. Um, we're gonna say sesame dressing. Oh, I ran out. You know how you like, you know, when you were in elementary school and you were trying to write on the line and you just run out of space? <laughs> sesame dressing, um, nine, 14, here we go. Okay. Third thing. Third thing requires some measurement. We're gonna have to move a little bit closer to my kitchen scale. It's just over a few feet this way. Okay. So, it's very exciting. Um, I'm gonna prep a bunch of pickled peppers or peppers. I'll do the brine later, but we're gonna do the peppers now with you all because you're here. Uh, need a knife. Yes. I need a seltzer. Okay. We're gonna need the gloveys back on because these are peppers. And um, I've made that mistake before of working with spicy things and touching my eyes. <laughs> or going to the restroom or anything. Like just working with peppers, please wear gloves. Or, um, you know, suffer the, the burning hands and the... <laughs> it's not terrible, but uh, it's, it's quite unpleasant if you've been cutting a bunch of jalapenos and uh, you touch your eye, you have contact lenses or something. Not great, not great. Okay, so for this recipe, we are using pickled long hot peppers. So I need to get to 130 grams uh, sliced into 1 16th rounds. So yeah, bear claw, you know, cause you make hot sauce, right? Yeah, it's terrible when you mostly work with super hots. Yeah, gotta wear the gloves. Gotta, 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 gotta protect yourself. And then sometimes um, with the really, really hot peppers, you should wear a mask. Um, cause you can breathe in those fumes, especially if you're working with a hot brine. I've definitely gassed myself making vinegar. Uh, no, not, not vinegar, I made mustard before. And I totally gassed, my, the mustard gassed myself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course I remember Bear Claw, come on. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have my pint container on my scale so that we can get to 130 grams. I'm gonna tear. Hello, tear. Tear. Oh, it's on uneven ground. All right, tear. All right. Oh, you actually take your blender outside when you open them? That's that rules. <laughs> that is like, that is god shit. That is so cool. All right, so got, we're gonna pickle these long hots, but we're actually gonna cut them into um, 16th inch which is thinner than uh, you, how you would roll pastry. So most pastry recipes will tell, or like most bread recipes or pizza will say like roll it to a quarter inch thickness. And that's like the standard mostly people are, are used to. So 16th is even smaller than that. Okay, watch me slice some things. Well, I'm gonna double check. Let's get the tape measure out. Let's, <laughs> I, wanna, I wanna double check. Cause my intuition might be wrong. Okay, welcome, please welcome egg tape measure. Uh, my friend Sam gave me this a couple years ago. Uh, <laughs> its eye is bleeding, but uh, here we go. So we got an inch here. So half is the big line and then quarter is the next big line. And so 16th is half of that. So, oh, I see. Okay, yeah, I know what that is. Beep, 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 beep. So that half is two millimeters, essentially. So let's go for it. This is flour. Okay. I could also use a mandolin, but these are such long vegetables that I don't, I just think that they're too delicate to use on with that kind of force. Look, those are great. Look at, so uniform. Oh my God. Oh my God. You're beautiful. 
Oh, I, I ripped one. Oh, no. What a wonderful sound. Okay, let's see how much a third of the pepper is in grams. A third of the pepper in grams is 11.6, so we need a bunch more. So I'm just gonna slicey, slicey, slice. Oops, I'm going a little too big. Oh, your pepper harvest was kind of meh this year? Oh, that's disappointing. My knife needs to be sharpened. All right. I might take out the pith here and some of these. When you get toward the top, we're gonna take the pith out. But I'm gonna keep some of the seeds, I don't mind. Not so bad. Keep them in the ring shape. Great. Look at you go, look at you. All right, one pepper was 40 grams. So whatever 130 divided by 40 is. how many peppers I will need. Maybe I'll write that down. La, 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 la. One pepper processed is 40 grams. FYI. <laughs> this is the kind of work I do. It's very, yeah, a little over three peppers. Yeah, this is the kind of work I do. You, you're, the exactitude of it. Kind of funny. Ooh, this one got a little curl. <laughs> Nightmare before Christmas. <laughs> Cute. Go faster. Really easy, they just come out so easily. Just put your thumb through the hole. There you go, see, look, hole, oh, done. Oh, I have hot peppers on my keyboard? Yeah, that happens. That's fine. I won't die. Oh, that pepper was much lighter. That was not 40 grams. That was only 20. So, maybe these coiled... Look at this one! This one's like, hi. I want to be complicated. <laughs> We're gonna go for a more easier to slice one. Here we go. Boy, yeah, I do need to sharpen this. Oops, that was too thick. That's okay, they're all getting pickled. I'll make, I'll pick the nicest peppers for the photo. Right. Reminds me of duck penis, yeah. Ducks are like, the anatomy is so complicated. Ducks. Whoa. We're at 80 grams. Okay, we're getting close. Get the seeds. 
seeds out. Seed and pith. Mm. After a third pepper, we are at 100 grams. So yeah, be a fourth pepper. So close. 116. All right, yeah, so it'll be like four peppers. Essentially. four slices over but yeah a pint or two cups of sliced long hots is about 130 grams look at us go look at us who'd have thought who'd have thought um i actually keep my seeds from a lot of my produce especially peppers because they grow so easily inside my house um i have a lot of windowsill plants and peppers are like the ones that really love to grow in this environment. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, just gonna grow, regrow a lot of these, I guess. Let's get it on the sheet pan so that I can dry out these seeds and then save them. I always do both the pith and the seeds when I dry these out because I can just pick out the pith later when it's, when it's uh, all dry. So complicated. All right. A spicy knife in the sink. Beep, 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 beep. Take off the scary spicy gloves. And another thing, you either want to flip over your cutting board or use another one if you're going to continue cooking because all your food will be spicy. <laughs> Okay, what am I doing next? I'm gonna make another vinaigrette, so that's actually not going to take place on here. Did some some prep there. Let me get, let me see if I can get the scale, kitchen scale, to extend its cord over here. My gosh, come on, come on. Okay, so we've got the kitchen scale here. So I'm just gonna measure some stuff. Uh, this is kind of uh, along the lines of what I do for work here. So they've given me the measurements in a certain in a certain style and I have to give them the conversion. Um, so we're gonna use a measuring cup because this is a liquid, a liquid thing that we're working with. And sometimes I have to deduce how much something is in like these other cups that are kind of dirty. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna use 150 grams of this white wine vinegar. So we have to tear, tear. Okay, what is 115 grams? I bet it's a small measure. Half cup. <gasps> okay, we're at 70. 80. Okay. 
110. <laughs> this is the scientist in me. 114.9. I think we'll get there. It's fine. 115. Oh, see, it settles the weight. If you if you hesitate, it'll it'll get to the weight. So 115 is like half a cup. Welcome to my job. <laughs> Uh, all right. I'm unsure of the other one. I think the measure might be less than what the cup offers here. So I'm going to do 60 grams of this other vinegar in the big measure, and then I'll pour it into a smaller one to see what it actually is. So we're looking for 60 grams of this one. Tear. Tear is your friend on a digital scale. Oh no. And this is like a annoying spout vinegar. It only does a little drop at a time because it's so potent, but doesn't help for me because I'm doing this motion on a live stream, which is not great. Um, okay, so we're already at 40 grams. <coughs> 50, 53, 54, 55, 59.1, little drop. Drop. There we go. <laughs> this is like titration. You remember that from high school chemistry? Oh, come on. 59.9. All right, that's it. 60. <laughs> that was so silly. Um, I'm going to guess this is a quarter cup. Gonna guess. 60 grams is a quarter cup. Ooh, you make resin dice? That's nice. Yeah, I actually found this, this, um, I found this scale on the street because somebody was throwing out a bunch of coffee, uh, stuff, and I don't drink coffee, but this scale looked nice enough, so I use it for all my cooking and stuff. Um, I'm gonna guess that this is a quarter cup. If I pour it into the quarter cup, it should be exactly... Oh, I was right. It is a quarter cup. Hell yeah. Cool. Sick. We're gonna mix it with our other vinegar here. I knew it. I knew it was a quarter cup. Okay, cider vinegar is 75 grams. So we know that 60 grams of the Muscatel is a quarter cup. So it's gonna be a quarter cup plus something, right? So let's just measure this here. So this is going to be 75. Fifty-five. Sixty-five. Seventy. It's going to probably be a... Oh, over. I don't care if it's over a little bit. But I'm the one that's going to eat it. Okay, so we know that it's already going to be 60 grams is going to be a quarter cup. So we have a quarter cup plus whatever's left over in this container. So whatever this is. So I think this is going to be a tablespoon. Let's see. <gasps> no, oh my God. A tablespoon plus <gasps> a half. Oh my God, that's so complicated. A tablespoon and a half is three four and a half teaspoons. You do the math. Three and a half teaspoons. <laughs> Boy. Mm, quarter cup plus three and a half teaspoons. Oh, no. Yeah. Or, uh, How would I say that better? There's a better way to say that. A quarter cup is four tablespoons. Oh boy. Four tablespoons plus three and a half teaspoons. Oh God, I hate our system. I hate our measuring system, it sucks. Anyway, two grams of kosher salt. Tiny, tiny ramekin, tiny ramekin. I'm gonna guess, so I'm gonna guess that this is 
half a teaspoon. I'm gonna guess. I love this guessing because it ends up being knowing, right? Yeah, so one, one teaspoon is about 5.7. So if we go half of that, it'll be a half teaspoon. Where's my half teaspoon measure? I don't know where it is. Found it. Okay. So if I do this correctly, so I think, let's go back, tear, tear. Okay. Level off the half teaspoon. Where's your salt? Two. There we go. Half teaspoon. Boop, 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 boop. And then 175 grams of olive oil. Hmm. <laughs> so. Oh. Okay, so this needs to be emulsified. So I'm going to put all the oil. And I'm going to do the, the uh, I mean, I'm going to put all the salt and vinegars together, but I think I'm going to do the oil separately because it needs to be emulsified and I don't have the setup for that right now. I will later when I put all this away. Anyway, that's all the prep I really needed to do. I do, I should measure out this olive oil. I'll do that right now. Let's do that. So we'll go a little backwards for this. So I have my cup measure here. So we're looking for 175 grams of olive oil, which I have a giant jug Yeah, I have a giant jug. I love this. Tear, tear, my friend, tear. All right. So we're looking for 175 grams. Gotta be careful, these way different volumes, wow. Wow, okay, so a cup I think is gonna be 175. Oh yeah, a cup is a 175. Oh my God, look at that. Holy moly. We've done our prep for the evening. Wow, look at me go. We've learned things today. <laughs> that a cup of olive oil is 175 grams. Uh, and yeah, it's great. I love Wegmans, let me say. Yeah, Wegmans is the best. They have so many things in stock that um, most grocery st stores don't. So I really love it. Like they have international stuff. They have like, um, like really nice produce like it's really well taken care of produce like it's not all bruised and stuff um i love wegman's cheese bread they have this cheese um sliced bread that has like a cheddar swirl on the inside i love it um and then their brand stuff is always just like cheaper and great um and they have good cheese and charcuterie of course i love that stuff yeah they're really good i love wegman's all right, folks, um, thanks for hanging out with me um, and doing my prep with me. Um, I might be taking next week off because I'm catering a wedding, but then I'll be back after that. Um, but yeah, thanks for hanging out. It's September, so uh, not just this channel, but all channels on Twitch are getting a little discount if you subscribe this month. Um, and the longer you subscribe, uh, the more discount you get, which is really nice. Uh, otherwise, uh, let's go see who we can raid right now. Hmm, let's see, let's raid somebody. Oh, it's Patrick. Let's, let's, uh, we're gonna raid Patrick. I'm gonna go to his channel real quick. Hmm. I'm gonna put my headphones on so that I can hear him. But thanks all for hanging out. Um, stick around for this raid for Patrick's channel. Um, don't forget to tag me in your cooking photos. Uh, I'll feature them either next week or the week after. Otherwise, uh, listen to Culinary Word of the Day. It's my new podcast. Hooray. Uh, and I will try the basting oil. Oh my God. Good tip. I will check it out. 
I'll, I'll put it in my Wegmans cart right now. Um, thanks everybody for hanging out. Uh, have a good evening. Have a good dinner and I'll see you next time. Bye y'all. Stick around for the rain.